The Red Planet has been the subject of many conversations and debates. What happened during the 4.6 billion years of its existence? What secrets does it hold beneath its surface of sand and dust? One way to find potential answers to your questions would be to go there in person in order to learn more about its geology, its structure and therefore its past. Today I want to take you on a trip to Mars and explore five incredible places that will teach you some of my favorite facts about the Red Planet. But before we start, I just wanted to quickly come back to the question of the day from my previous immersive learning video on Hypatia of Alexandria and Neoplatonism. I've asked you if um, you could describe the one, the source consciousness, the source of everything in your own words. I've had some very cool comments and I have promised that I would pick my favorite one and read it in my next video in this one. The answer I picked is by Mihyar Alhamui. I'm very sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. The one is the ecstatic beauty of living, the order within all disorder, and the willful, self-sustaining existence that spirals out of its own self. I thought it was very beautifully said, so thank you so much. We'll do the same today, so stay tuned. And without further ado, let's teleport ourselves to the surface of Mars. Follow me. Please stand on the teleportation pad for me. Our first destination is located north of the planet. It is a very tall structure that is said to have formed around 3,700 million years ago during the Hesperian period. It is called Mount Olympus. I'll see you there. Mount Olympus is the tallest mount of the entire solar system. It is around 24 kilometers high, which makes it about three times higher than Mount Everest, and its volume is a hundred times more important than Mauna Loa, the tallest volcano on Earth. Not only is it really high, but it also covers an area of 300,000 kilometers square, which makes it pretty much as big as Italy. This means we will never be able to see its full structure from the surface of Mars due to its massive size and the curvature of the planet. You would also not be able to tell you were standing at the top of a mountain if you were standing at its summit because its largest caldera at its summit is 80 kilometers wide. Now what's really exciting is that Mount Olympus is actually an active volcano. You can find six collapsed calderas at the top of the mountain that collapsed due to the magma chambers underneath them being empty as the lava probably escaped during its last largest eruption 25 million years ago, although some scientists are speculating that it could also have erupted only a few years ago. Now let's go to our second location, still located north of the planet, not far from the North Pole. This is the Korolev Crater, named after spacecraft designer Sergei Korolev. It is 81.4 kilometers in diameter and contains about 2,200 cubic kilometers of ice. The air present right above the crater is much colder than the air around it, insulating the ice and preventing it from ever melting or evaporating. This is called a cold trap. What I really like about this crater is its spherical shape and the nice contrast between the white of the ice and the rusty color of Mars's surface. And it's also perfect for ice skating. Now let's go down to the south because there's something very beautiful I would like to show you. Before I start explaining why I brought you here and why it's all dark, Let's do the question of the day real quick. 
If humans were to colonize Mars and start over, and you could give them one advice, could be any type of advice of, on pretty much anything you'd like, what would it be? Feel free to elaborate on why you would give this advice in the comments down below and I will pick my favorite one and read it at the beginning of my next immersive learning video. Can't wait to see your answers. Now this one isn't about Mars' geology, rather it is about something we thought was impossible on Mars. Look up. The first Martian aurora ever photographed was captured by the probe HOPE and its ultraviolet spectrometer in 2021 on the planet's southern hemisphere. I said we thought this phenomena was impossible on Mars because normally auroras require some charged particles from solar winds to heat a planet's uh, magnetic field and the thing is Mars does not possess a magnetic field, a global magnetic field. A global magnetic field is a magnetic field that would expand thousands of kilometers in space like Earth. So how is it possible then? Physicists believe that this could be due to solar winds interacting with the weak remnant magnetic field of Mars caused by its crust in its southern regions. However, new findings also suggest that this could be a proton aurora, a distinct class of auroral phenomena caused by energetic protons precipitating into a planetary atmosphere. If you are interested in learning more about this study, it was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Space Physics. Now let's go to this cave over there. We'll need to go deep underground. we are. In 2018, scientists found the potential presence of a large underground salt lake located by Mars's South Pole, under the ice. Two years later, they have found three other potential lakes in the same areas. They have now discovered dozens of these lakes under the ice. This was found using a radar instrument on the orbiting spacecraft Mars Express, called the Mars Advanced Radar for Subsurface and Ionosphere Sounding. The instrument detected areas of high reflectivity that could very well indicate the presence of liquid water located at one kilometer underneath Mars's ice. The first lake they found would be 20 kilometers long, much bigger than this one and could be the remnant of ancient lakes and seas that once covered Mars's surface. Although most of Mars's water is said to have evaporated in space, it is also possible that some of it would have been absorbed by its soil and is now underground. Although this is still a debate, as some scientists believe the water could actually be volcanic rock. Finally, the last thing I wanted to show you is right here. Follow me. Scientists have found strong evidence of the presence of hydrated silica on the surface of Mars. This is also known as opal. They discovered it on a Martian meteorite called Nakla. Opal is this beautiful, colorful stone mostly found in Australia. They look like galaxies or rainbows have been trapped in them. Now this could actually be evidence for life on Mars, as opal is generally created when water and silica interact generally near hot springs, which is a place where microbial life thrives. Opal could trap those microbes for millions of years, kind of like amber would trap insects. This means that microbes could still be preserved in opal deposits on the surface of Mars. Because I love you, there is a sixth and final place that I wanted to show you. It's located back on the surface in a region called the Labyrinth of Night. It has a lot of mysteries surrounding it. 
and we'll explore it together on my Patreon account. This will allow you to not only support my work and allow me to post more videos like this, but to also get access to a lot of bonus content, uh, updates and behind the scenes videos and even more. Um, so I guess I will see you there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and this kind of format. If you did, please feel free to share it with your friends. You can also like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. I would be very happy to have you on board. If you also want more information on what I do and what my mission is with Noviaria, my platform, you can just go on my website, click on the links in the description. Let me know if there's any specific topic you would like me to cover um, and if there's any improvements uh, I could make please let me know. I will see you very soon with a new video. In the meantime, take care!